Well, gentlemen, uh, two weeks in a row, late night return after a win. That makes that late night a little easier. But what time did you guys get to bed on, on Sunday morning after the Arkansas victory? I got to bed around 4 a.m. 4 a.m. Yeah. In case you didn't know, that's the voice of Alex Caesar. He is the guest of Connor McQueen here on the Red Zone. The Red Zone. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Question still stands. What time did you get to bed on a Sunday morning? Uh, I was about I was about 3:30. I got home, dropped my stuff down, and went face first into bed. So, you know, uh, <laughs> face first. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. tired. It's, I was this tired. Is, this is real fatigue, guys. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I knew it. He may have been a little bit more fatigued than me, but you know, <laughs> that's I, all right. I was, that's all know, right. Yeah. I just need a little bit more sleep, maybe. There you <laughs> go. There you go. <laughs> The Aggies uh, defeat Arkansas this past Saturday. It's two straight wins on the road in the SEC. A&M beat Auburn a couple weeks ago. Ar- uh, Arkansas this time around at AT&T Stadium. We've got Connor McQueen and Alex Caesar with us. Again, it's the latest edition of the Red Zone, the newly named. And uh, you approve of that uh, name for this man's segment here on Studio I 12? I approve of that name. <laughs> yeah. Feel good about it? I feel good about it. Yeah. I always, we always ask each guest if they're they're somewhat honored to have been chosen to of arrive course. here. You're to, good? To yeah. be a guest in the red zone, I mean, <laughs> that's a special place. That's right. <laughs> Carry some weight with, with the people. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you guys will uh, stay on the road this weekend. It's three straight. Uh, going to South Carolina to face the Gamecocks. It'll kick off at 3 p.m. from williams Bryce Stadium. That's central time. It'll be 4 p.m. where we are eastern out there. But uh, th- this this three-game road string, uh, swing, excuse me, is it is it at all taking its toll? Because we just talked about it. 3 a.m. is probably when we got back uh, from the Auburn trip. You mentioned when you got to bed after going to Arlington to beat the Razorbacks. Uh any toll on you guys or the team yet with with a, with so much being on the road at this point? Uh, I, th- I mean, I think that's one of the things that Coach Sumlin does a great job of is, you know, whether we're at home or we're on the road, we establish a routine early in the year to where, we're at, where whenever we're traveling, we, you know, we're doing things at a certain time just to make it the same each and every week. And then, you know, when it comes to getting home late, you know, after that Auburn game, we got home pretty late and, Coach Sumlin recognized that, that we had to come up here, you know, around noon the next day, or I guess later that day. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, he recognized that, that some of the guys, you know, weren't getting much sleep, so he made an adjustment this week. So, you know, we did all of our recovery stuff, actually, right when we got back from mm-hmm. uh, from Dallas. And then, you know, we had just the rest of the day off on Sunday to where, you know, guys could catch up on sleep, you know, get a head start on schoolwork for the week since it's test week, you know, things like that to where uh, – you know, he's, he's been making adjustments and, you know, really making it more beneficial for us. Mm-hmm. And, Alex, for you, I mean, is it a little easier to go through that recovery in the dead of night after you just beat Arkansas? Yeah. might have been a little different <laughs> if the outcome were the other way around, wouldn't it? Winning <laughs> makes everything a lot easier. Um, <laughs> like Connor said, Coach, you know, he put things in place to help us. This is the first time we've been able to fly back from Dallas uh, in four years, mm-hmm. well, three years playing in Arlington, so <laughs> – that was great to be able to fly back opposed to riding a bus back, being cramped up, getting back at 5 a.m., then having to wake up and go to recovery at 12. So we're able to get back around, I'd say, about 3 o'clock and knock the recovery out, get it done. So it helped a lot of guys be able to sleep on Sunday. So there's no hangover here. Yeah, no doubt. And was this uh, – I think we talked last week, Connor. Was this uh, – I forget what you guys call the council. I don't know if it's a leadership or accountability mm-hmm. council. The, the – the traveling back right after the game by plane may have been a product of you guys and knowing what's best for your teammates. We definitely like pushed it. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, was the, that was the first question yeah, I asked was, when we got in that meeting this was, past week. So, uh, was, but Coach, uh, Coach Sumlin already had it worked out, but we were definitely trying to push for that flight yeah, back. Yeah, it was funny. Yeah, that was the f- – Coach Sumlin always, before, whenever we start those meetings, he just opens it up, you know. Wh- wh- so what's up with you guys, you know, questions, comments, concerns, what you guys got? And Caesar goes, I vote that uh, – we take that private jet and just the accountability <laughs> council flies back from Dallas. Oh, you are just <laughs> you before, guys. Before I'm going to throw him under the bus. Before, yeah. uh, you know, well, that's just us hoping, you know, none of the other guys are listening to this right now. They aren't on the council. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he, he threw that out there. And, you know, Coach Summer was like, well, actually, I got something for you guys. We actually are going to fly back if you guys want to. Nice. And, you know, gave us the option, too, if that's something that we'd be interested in. Yeah. Well, I just figured the council's minds would need to be rested to right, make the exactly. important decisions. Yeah, exactly. The thinkers. Right. Right. <laughs> the think tank yeah. has got to be creativity we need to get back early on Sunday morning <laughs> yeah. so yeah. we can sleep. So that way we're well rested for our Wednesday accountability yeah. council yeah. meeting. So It's all about can, the yeah. team. Yeah. Trying to help all of us. Yeah. Man, you guys love your sleep, don't you? 
<laughs> Student athlete, the li- they sleep about the most important thing you oh, do. There's, I completely underestimated just how great a post workout nap is until I got to college. And that first summer, I really experienced it after the, after a long summer workout, especially whenever you only have one class. Come home and sleep for like an hour or two, yeah. and there's nothing better. There really isn't to where it's just. I mean, we're so tired, anyways. You know, I've seen guys. After workouts, I mean, it happens quite a bit. Just sleep on the floor, <laughs> not even shower. Just come in, yeah. lay down on the floor, and you know, sleep for about an hour. So, it, it yeah, is. It is. It is so, you know, intricate in the recovery process, and that's actually with some of the sports science guys we brought in. That's something that we've really, uh, you know, increased, I guess, awareness of over the last two years, and really making sure that we're getting a good enough sleep to yeah. where, you know, focusing on getting more than just six hours. Yeah, and it is strange. August camp, I'll walk to the locker room and everybody's got their cots <laughs> and blow-up mattresses right. and things like that. But uh, uh, um, I'm Will Johnson here on the Red Zone. Uh, Matt Simon's going to join us later in the show. Uh, he had, you know, you get meetings sometimes, you, it's things like that. When you, But uh, Matt will join us later on the show. But right now it's the Red Zone with Connor McQueen and Alex Caesar. Uh, let's look back to Saturday. Uh, first, Alex, let me ask you this. Uh, as a defender going against that Arkansas run game, and now they've kind of built it in with a really good passer yeah, in Austin yeah. Allen, but just how grueling is it to go against Arkansas, and I like to call it that sledgehammer yeah. offense they come at you with? You know going into the game is going to be a battle uh, based on previous years and also just watching the film that, you know, those guys play hard, so we knew it was going to be a battle coming in. and. Um, just some of the comments made, we knew we were going to have to step up and play big boy football. So it's always a challenge. Um, and then the pass game, they really test your eye discipline. You know, play action pass, boots, things like that, that you really have to be disciplined in the back end and not bite on the run fake. So it's a, it's kind of like a two-edged sword. You know, you, you get caught up in trying to stop the run. Next thing you know, the ball's <laughs> going over your head. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's a big thing. It's just a lot of – it takes a lot of discipline to be the team like that. Yeah. I think that's something that Coach Joseph, you know, implements and stresses so much throughout the week. Cause, you know, from the offensive side of the ball, that's something that we look for on defenses to take advantage of whenever team's eye control isn't good, whenever the safeties are looking into the right. backfield. Mm-hmm. That gives us an opportunity to take a shot over the top. And, you know, I think that's something that Coach Joseph, since he's gotten here, has really stressed and we have continued to improve on, so, uh, you know, over the last couple of years yeah. on our defense. I always ask you, Connor, after a game about Trevor's performance, but let me throw it to the other side. Uh, did, did you walk away with the respect for Austin Allen? Because there's a lot of the talk about the beating he took, but, oh, I mean, I, he, he still was, threw the ball well. Yeah, there was oh, there were quite a few of us looking for him after the game. You know, I just wanted to go get, go up and give him a hug. <laughs> but, you know, I, I was so impressed that, you know, that, that just shows the kind of toughness that that, that kid has. And, you know, he's going to continue to be a great quarterback, not only in this league, but I think at the next level as well. Because, you know, that's that's what NFL scouts, NFL teams are looking for these days. You know, they want a quarterback that's going to be durable, that's going to be able to play throughout an entire season, you know. And, you know, what better way to do that in the SEC? But, I mean, he definitely showed it yeah. on Saturday to where, you know, that's one of the more gutsy performances I've seen mm-hmm. uh, in my college career. Mm-hmm. And I want to ask both of you about – what may have been the most pivotal point in the game. You're tied at half, uh, right. 17-17. You go down into the red zone with an opportunity to score, uh, but a high snap and a fumble, that's unfortunate. They get the turnover. They march the field. Mm-hmm. So first on the defensive side, Alex, that goal line stand. Yeah. Does that just bring chill bumps <laughs> to you when you think back about uh, the four stops and Armani's right. tackle on Keon Hatcher to close it? It definitely does. You never know which play is going to be the play. Mm-hmm. You don't get the pick, but you have to play every play like it's going to be the, the play that changes the game. And, you know, a couple stand out to me. Obviously, you know, when you mentioned Armani Watts, big time tackle inside the red zone. And then you have the strip, you know, it probably goes right. in for a touchdown mm-hmm. if he didn't pull the ball out. So that guy, you know, his individual effort in the red zone. And then as a team, we just have guys, you know, pushing the line of scrimmage, re- redefining the line of scrimmage. Sean Washington, say Coven Henderson, you watch the film, those guys are in the backfield. And the running back is looking at his offensive lineman yeah. <laughs> standing right in front of him. So <laughs> even though those guys may not have made the tackle, it make a big difference when you redefine the line of scrimmage. So it was a team effort inside of the red zone. No question. And then, Connor, on the offensive side, to do what you did right after that, mm-hmm. go 90-plus to Josh right. Reynolds. I mean, you, you talk about a swing in a football yeah. game. Oh, I know. That, you know, that was what was just so – 
you know, it's just a testament to where our team's at this year, to where, you know, we hit some adversity, you know, we drive all the way down the field, and, then, you know, we're, we have the momentum, we hit some adversity, we fumble inside our own five-yard line, and then they drive the length of the field, go 95 yards, and almost a 10-minute you know, <laughs> drive, almost yeah, the entire third quarter. 19 plays, I think right. it was, yeah. yeah. It was just a, a massive drive, and then our mm-hmm. defense would hold up there at the end, and, you know, then, you know, us thinking, you know, it's time to take a shot. We've got the momentum, and, you know, mm-hmm. we took the shot, and, you know, Trevor and Josh made it happen to where, you know, if that's what I was joking around. You know, Josh Reynolds might as well just have a partial ownership <laughs> in that building now, you know. <laughs> and so he, I was joking around. He says he has the land grant to that building. <laughs> <laughs> he's covered a lot uh, of ground he's, there. He's, yeah. done, he's done some uh, some serious damage yeah. to, to the Razorbacks in the last three years in that stadium. Yeah, and I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, Josh, in doing that, he now has 2,000 career receiving yards. He's just sixth Aggie to ever do it, and we're talking about company of Ryan Swope, Terrence Murphy, Uzoma Wachaku. I right. mean, uh, Josh, kind of an elite company these days with, oh, with, with what he's done in his career. And, you know, he's, he's been very talented – you know, athlete and receiver and an asset for us since he's been here. It's just, it just seems like he, every year he kind of goes under the radar. I mean, even the year they broke the single season touchdown, right? yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, not that many people are talking about him. He's a real quiet guy, you know, mild mannered and, you know, doesn't ask for much, just goes out and kind of does his thing. And, you know, it's fun to watch because, you know, there's tons of, you know, what we call 50, 50 balls where the ball's just up in the air, but he just has that it factor and that knack to get to the ball and, you know, make the play for the offense. Mm-hmm. Want to ask both of you about this too, as we've got Connor McQueen and Alex Caesar with us here on the Red Zone Studio Twelve, Texas A&M, getting ready to take on South Carolina Saturday. Coming into the season, people will talk about programs from the outside, whether it's negative or positive. And maybe before the season, it wasn't as positive as you guys would have liked. But you seem to block that out. The outside talk doesn't infiltrate the walls of the Bright Complex. But look at you four games and a month into the season. Now they talk so positively about you. Now they say, oh, look at A&M. This is a real contender here. Do you also have to block that out too within the confines of the Bright Complex? I would say you definitely have to block mm-hmm. that out. Um, we, we, we won't forget. We haven't forgotten <laughs> what people said about us right. before the season started. Um, so that's always something. We still have a chip on our shoulder. We still want to get better every week. And – Within this building, I won't say exactly what it is, but we know what we have to get accomplished um, for people to respect us. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that won't happen until <laughs> the season's over with. Right. So um, we haven't forgotten what people said about us. And right now, you know, it's great. We appreciate it. But the next game is the most important game. Because mm-hmm. if we don't win that game, the talk will change. Right. right. So. And I think that's one thing that, you know, shows where we're at as a team this year in – reference to other years because I, I mean I think in like the last couple of years I mean I'm not saying we were full bought into all that but you know whenever the talk came you know we had a lot of guys reading into that and, you know we let it we kind of lost track and lost our focus to where I think we, you know we've got our head down to the grindstone mm-hmm. and you know just working on getting better each and every practice you know even if it isn't for this week you know just you know five six weeks down the road but mm-hmm. I mean like you said in the in the off season, you know there's there's a lot of people that can that can panic very quickly and you know you and I have talked about this before just you know whether it's guys transferring or you know recruits decommitting or things like that there's always panic but you know that's the neat thing about just us as a brotherhood in the locker room is you know people think that you know our team's falling apart but you know that doesn't <laughs> matter to any of us yeah. like, I mean mm-hmm. that's not something that I mean maybe maybe, maybe talk about for a day but, you know, going forward, even throughout the off season, whenever stuff like that's happening, you know, we're nothing's changing for us. We're still going about our business, you know. I mean, our goals haven't changed. Our team mentality hasn't changed. Our identity hasn't changed. Or where, you know, it's people can always look from the outside and, you know, think that things are falling apart or, you know, things are either going one way or the other. But, you know, only truly the people inside that unit can know how, how the team's going to be and, you know, what the real environment is in there, which, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's it's cool for us, you know, kind of look back and, you know, just kind of chuckle at things <laughs> people are saying, whether yeah. it's good or whether it's bad, because, you know, it makes no difference to us really at this juncture. Yeah, because that's my thing. I mean, I, since beating Arkansas and really since beating Auburn and then couple that with the win over Arkansas, you get the talk. You get mm-hmm. – Wow, A&M's playing really well. And quite frankly, a lot of people are saying, 
Look at that October 8th matchup of Tennessee and A&M. Look at the end of October when A&M goes to Alabama. Look at what those games are shaping up. And I sit here and say, why would anybody in the world look past a trip to Columbia, South Carolina right. to play an SEC road and, game? And like I mentioned before, the thing is, if we don't win this week, that matchup yeah, is not exactly. what people make it out Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, even going back to the beginning of the season, we beat UCLA. We're going into Preview A&M. Um, everyone wants to jump to Auburn. If we don't win this week, <laughs> yeah. if we lose to this team, yeah. nobody's talking about that game next mm-hmm. week. So we have to win every week. And, I mean, that's what it's about. We're trying to be 1-0 this week. And if we can do it every week, we'll be fine at the end of the season. But the goal is to be 1-0 every week. Mm-hmm. And we're not looking ahead. We're not looking back. You know, we'll we review the game tape. Now it's over with. Now it's time to get on to South Carolina. So, there you go. Um, and that's all we're focused on right I'll tell now. Tell you what I am looking forward to though is uh sandstorm. Sandstorm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you. Yeah. Let me tell you. <laughs> That'll be good. That's 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 right that's up Connor McQueen's alley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, and that's true. And that's true. <laughs> that's exactly right. Uh it's good to have both of you on cuz you're both so involved with our special teams. And uh, Alex special teams player of the week uh, after after uh, the Tip effort against the Razorbacks. The but, uh, Back-to-back years against the Razorbacks. Yeah. As he so informed us. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the, the Hogs may hate him, too, just like yeah. Josh Reynolds. But uh, just – I think it's such a interesting dynamic on this team because I look at each unit, you know, you know punt return, punt coverage, kickoff coverage, kickoff return, your field goals, your punts, your punter, your, your place kickers, things like that. I mean, there's no weakness on this special teams, if you ask me. I mean, I just think with Jeff Banks and the way you guys handle it, it is just such a strength that maybe goes a little too unnoticed when it comes to the Aggies. And, you know, that's the great thing about special teams is, you know, maybe – it doesn't necessarily always have to be noticed because, you know, it either gets noticed whenever you're making very good plays or whenever you're making yep. very yeah. bad plays. But, you know, I think that's one of the things that he's done. Great. Coach Banks has done phenomenal since he's been here. You know, that's our goal is to be number one in every facet of special teams in the SEC. And, you know, we're working at each and every week to, you know, to accomplish that. You know, he's the the amount of passion and intensity that Coach <laughs> Banks brings he's fun to, to the special teams room, <laughs> it's – and almost imp- imp- near impossible to not give everything you have and give yeah. your undivided attention and everything you've got for him to to you know execute his schemes and you know and really uh, achieve that goal that we've set. Yeah, Coach Banks is pivotal in it all. Um, our guys play hard. Our guys are bought into the system of special teams and, and being number one in the SEC. Um, you mentioned weaknesses. We we try to expose our own weakness before we go into the game. So you know whether it's reviewing game film looking at what we did wrong, and um, we compete mm-hmm. in fall camp. I mean, I'm trying to expose everybody <laughs> everybody out there. If you and have a does. weakness, I will good. find yes. it. Excellent. So, uh, and I mean, we, we make each other better. Um, and every week, by making each other better, we go out there and we're a better unit. So we expose each other in practice mm-hmm. just to yeah, make sure that we don't get exposed yeah, on that's, game day. That's, <laughs> that's one of the more, more uh, it, enjoyable parts. It, of it makes the guys practice. feel a lot better when, you know, <laughs> something happens to them in practice and then a guy goes out and he does it to the opponent in the game. It's like, okay, well, maybe I'm not as bad as I thought I was. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, exactly. I enjoy – we enjoy uh, us quarterbacks. We, we make sure we get our drills done quickly on some of the days where yeah. Coach Banks pulls out his special uh, <laughs> special teams drills during fall camp, which is usually pretty fun. Yeah, and speaking of Banks, I mean, people talk about if you go out to practice, Terry Price can get loud, Jimmy Turner, and Ole Mazzoni is a funny mm-hmm. guy. But as far as vocals go, <laughs> Jeff Banks underrated guy, isn't he? I, I believe he is one of the underrated guys. Mm-hmm. He will he will lose his voice every day if he yeah. has to. I mean, that's so. for sure. You know, that's first special teams period. He's very loud. Mm-hmm. Second special teams period of the day. You can you can yeah, barely he, hear. He's we gotta turn the music <laughs> down so you can start coaching because his voice is is already gone from yelling. Uh, I I take him in one period, but you know over the long haul I'm gonna have to go. With Coach Price, Coach yeah. Price's voice Coach. doesn't die. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that voice is forever. Yeah. Very <laughs> nice, very nice. Well, before you guys go, we got to dive into the world world of academia a little bit. Here. <laughs> you are you are student athletes. The student comes first, and I, I'm sitting here with a couple of guys, and I want to I want to divulge it on air because we talked about this before we started. Uh, Alex Caesar, uh, Little Cypress Mooresville High School. Uh huh. 
salutatorian out of 260 graduating class. Is that right? Yeah. Now, my man Connor over here, pretty good. I think we said 45th? 45. Out of 880. Not not quite number two, but you know. (laughs) But that's a pretty good percentage. You know those high schools in Houston, man. That's competitive. They can swell up with a lot of people. But who's smarter? I I can I can honestly say that I think Alex can do <laughs> what I do, but I know that I I know for a fact <laughs> that I can't do what he does. So let's we'll put that way. Oh he man! Because built in, they they do some of the they do some of the, a lot of the business classes for uh, for his majors, and mm-hmm. I, I I don't do any engineering. <laughs> but well, industrial distribution yeah. is, is yeah. Alex's major. But yes. uh, Connor's going to do your taxes soon, yeah. so. You we'll be, we'll be partners that. one day. Yeah. So. That's right. Yeah, we've already, yeah, we've already, we've already hashed on the it out. Yeah. All right. we got a plan. <laughs> we got a plan yeah, for a plan after football. Place, you know, we, you know, yeah, we're we're, we're going to talk. There we're going to exchange. We're going to link up on, yeah. on LinkedIn. Yeah. Exchange emails. <laughs> Atta boy. Atta boy. <laughs> also, real quick, though, before we say goodbye, just a quick thought on the game Saturday at South Carolina. I know you guys are trying to get October going right after finishing the first month undefeated. Just your take on the Gamecocks. Have you seen much from them when you watch the film? Well, one thing I noticed is that it's got to hold people to low point totals. Right. They haven't allowed a bunch of points yet. I mean, that's a testament. I mean, Coach Muschamp does a great job mm-hmm. wherever he goes and, you know, bringing that defensive mentality. And, you know, they, it seems they, they run a lot of stuff. They have they have a very a vast amount of schemes to where, you know, whenever you face a team like this, we really want to work on, you know, what do we do well and, you know, Going forward with that, you know, just kind of getting better each week and, you know, perfecting some of our uh, some of our schemes to where, you know, it's not necessarily always trying to exploit some of their weaknesses, but, you know, kind of, you know, eliminating our weaknesses and bolstering our strengths, especially on the offensive side of the ball. For you, Alex? Special teams and off on their offense, um, it's a, a group that's going to come out and play hard, and we know that. Um, they do some different things, present some different challenges, uh, quarterback run game, thing like things like that. So, we're going to have to be disciplined again this week and come out and play hard and, and play our game that we know we can. And on special teams, like, you know, Coach Muschamp, his mentality from defense is going to carry carry over the special teams and they're going to play hard. And um, every team is a little bit different on special teams, a little bit different scheme and things like that. So we'll have to be on our P's and Q's this week. And they're going to present some different challenges. So we'll have to be ready to roll. And I believe, you know, I'm confident in my group of guys and we'll be ready to go. So. Gonna have to play hard. It's a great environment. Yeah. Gonna have a little sand sandstorm. Sandstorm be cranked up so, for Connor. You know, they're they're gonna be ready to play. So we're gonna have to bring our game. They, they may regret sandstorm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, little little yeah. do they know we actually enjoy it. Yeah. So. We embrace we embrace the sandstorm yeah. to uh, the full effect. Well, well, good stuff. We wish you all the best on Saturday at Williams Bryce Stadium, Alex. Uh, Congratulations not only on being Special Teams Player of the Week, but being the newest guest here on the Red Zone. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, yeah. Good luck, guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Connor McQueen, Alex Caesar. That's another episode of the Red Zone in the book.